Fukushima Prefecture, or rather Fukushima City in the prefecture, plans to remove radioactive materials from all private houses. The move was decided after high levels of radiation were detected in some areas. The city is located about 60 kilometers from the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. Some people concerned about possible health risks to their children have already moved out. Fukushima plans to decontaminate all 110,000 households over the next two years. The goal is to lower radiation levels in the air. Professional cleaners will scrub radioactive substances from roofs and low-lying areas. They will also remove concrete, which radioactive material tends to adhere to. But residents will be required to remove surface soil and weed gardens by themselves. It has yet to be determined how the contaminated soil and other materials will be disposed of. One more item will be added to the list of radiation tests. Japan's tax officials have decided to check alcoholic beverages produced near the Fukushima plant to ensure their safety. The National Tax Agency says testing will start next month. It will cover all kinds of alcoholic drinks, including sake, wine, and beer, produced at breweries and factories within 150 kilometers of the plant. Brewing facilities outside the radius will also be randomly tested. Unshipped products and samples of water used to make the beverages will be checked. Rice and barley, the main ingredients for alcoholic products, have already been tested for radiation. If radioactive cesium or iodine above the government set safety limit is found, the agency will ask local authorities to issue a shipment ban or take other necessary measures. Tokyo Electric Power Company has begun sending out forms for companies and self-employed people affected by the Fukushima nuclear disaster to apply for compensation. Similar forms have already been mailed to individual evacuees, but TEPCO has come under fire for making the procedure unduly complicated. A legal team was set up last month to help people affected by the crisis at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. Since the volunteer lawmakers started, lawyers, I should say, lawyers started this counseling service last month, they have received about 400 inquiries. Many were complaints that the forms sent out by TEPCO were too complicated. Other applicants say they are dissatisfied with utilities' compensation terms. The company sent out some 7,000 forms on Tuesday. The legal team says the utility payment terms are negotiable, and if applicants are unhappy with the offer they are given, they can take their case to a government organization that will mediate compensation disputes. TEPCO has not explained that victims can take their case to the government organization that's been set up to settle disputes. We want people to understand they can demand the amount of compensation they think they are due and take alternative action. Meanwhile, an executive responsible for the compensation has told NHK that TEPCO will address complaints about the complexity of the application process. We will hold briefings, set up help desks and visit individual evacuees to offer assistance. We are now preparing supplementary materials that will help people find the relevant pages. These materials must be provided in the next couple of weeks, so we will finish preparing these as soon as possible. Japan's government is going to toughen up its computer security systems to keep hackers out. The recent cyber attack on the country's leading defense and nuclear equipment maker prompted the action. Hackers targeted production websites for Mitsubishi Heavy Industries, defense and nuclear power related products. So the infected servers were found to automatically connect to international sites. That made police suspect data theft as the motive. Japan's chief cabinet secretary says the government's information security panel will meet next week to strengthen anti-cyber attack measures. The government has been working to improve the level of information security in all of its offices, but this recent case prompted us to implement stronger measures.
Japan's Atomic Energy Commission has resumed discussions on revising the country's nuclear policy. Work to revise the policy started last December but was suspended after the Fukushima accident. Following the disaster, the commission added members who are experts on safety and take a tough stance on nuclear power. Some commission members called for shutting down all of Japan's nuclear plants and promoting alternate energy sources. Others say it's too early to determine long-term nuclear policy as the Fukushima plant remains out of control. Members advocating nuclear power noted that resource-poor Japan must aim for a realistic energy policy. The policy on nuclear power use, research and development was drawn up in 1956 and has been revised about every five years. It was last revised six years ago. It promotes nuclear power and calls for at least 30 percent reliance on nuclear energy after 2030. The policy continues in effect despite accidents at nuclear facilities and scandals that include cover-ups of accidents and other troubles. The Commission will drop a new policy outline over the next year. Attention will focus on how deeply the Commission can discuss revision of nuclear policy.